In today's show, we have a full preview of a brand new game for your Sega Genesis, Mega Drive, and Nintendo Switch. It's absolutely stunning and a game that you need to get. My name's Mike, and this is the Retro Gamer Boy Show. <laughs> Today we're doing a full preview on the Astro Bros demo. Now this game is on Kickstarter as of filming and it still has another week left for you to back it. It's a AAA roguelike game and it's available for the Sega Mega Drive, Genesis, Switch and Steam. Now spoiler alert, the game is stunning. And if you want to secure your copy of the game, whether it's physical, digital or one of the many collector's editions, then I wholeheartedly recommend that you drop down into the comments below and click on their Kickstarter campaign. The campaign is already fully funded, so there's little risk to you and this team have a proven track record of delivering games. Seriously, this game is brilliant. I've put in nearly seven hours and it's only a 20, 25 minute long demo. Now remember, this is a demo. And so a lot can change between now and when Neofid actually released the game in March 2023. Now, if you're new to the channel and you love your retro gaming, you love your Sega Mega Drive and Genesis, then why not consider subscribing and pressing other YouTube buttons around the screen? Now, as the Bros is described as a rogue light game, so it's wrapped in a kind of meta game. This means that when you die, you usually take something with you, whether it's XP, weapons, or some kind of gold and then you can use this to contribute to your next run. Unlike a rogue-like game where you take nothing with you, you just die and restart the level or game. Now in this demo, the rogue-like elements are not present. So when you die, it's the end of the game and you need to start again. But this is an early demo, so I'm expecting this to make its way into the game and certainly has elements like XP, abilities, weapon upgrades, gold, etc. to enable you to do this. The game takes place before the events of Demons of Astroburg and tells the story of the discovery of Astroburg and its first adventurers. Now for this preview, we're using the Kiga emulator. Now you start the demo off in the encampment. This is where you can buy weapons, choose characters, buy items, and you can even listen to a minstrel play you a jolly tune. In this demo, all but the minstrel is willing to interact with you. Once you're done with the encampment, it's off to the dungeons. Now, like any good roguelike game, the dungeons are randomly generated, and the same is true for Astro Bros. The entrance to the dungeon is always the same, with a chest full of coins and a wooden sword. But then, after this, the dungeon layout and rooms within it are randomly chosen from predefined tile sets. Each room contains a set number of enemies, a possible treasure chest, and a number of exit points. In order to move to the next room, you'll need to dispatch of all the enemies and collect any treasure chests. When you vanquish an enemy, they'll drop coins and sometimes health. In the chests, you'll find a variety of items from coins, jewels, keys, weapons, dungeon maps, and scrolls that unlock new weapons and equipment. Now, the spawning and contents of a treasure chest won't always be the same. Whilst you may come across a familiar room in Astro Bros, the contents of that treasure chest will be completely random. I found a silver sword in one chest and then never again in subsequent playthroughs. The same goes for dungeon maps. Sometimes I find one and other times not. I don't know if this is by design or a bug, but I like not always having the map and having to explore a little. Talking of the map, you can press start to see where you've been and where you are. Owning the dungeon map shows you where the treasure room is, the dungeon boss, and where the dungeon exit is. Now you get to play the knight in the demo, but in the full game you'll get to play the ranger and the mage, all have a number of abilities and special moves for you to master. The knight for his part can wield huge swords and can slash attack, jump attack, jump, dash and parry. Combat is very satisfying and the team at Neofit have layered in some lovely depth to your encounters. Enemies will not always be simply dispatched with a swipe of your sword. Some need their attacks parried to create an opening. Others need to have committed to an attack, giving you an opening. Some can have their attacks rebounded at them, while others need to be taken out midair. 
This depth makes for some very satisfying dungeon crawling. The final element of the dungeon is the dungeon boss. Now defeating the boss in the demo ends the dungeon run, but I'm guessing this will also give you the final key. Now the boss in the demo is a mixed bag for me. I love the design and the Zelda-like patterned attacks. However, the attack patterns change, and if you die, you start the whole dungeon exploration process again. So in order to learn the pattern of the dungeon boss, you need to play through several dungeons to get to fight him again and hopefully learn a little bit more before you die. It's more than a little frustrating. Now this is a demo and the roguelike metagame is not there yet. So this may help things when it comes to dungeon bosses. I do get a little PTSD though when I think back to the Demons of Asterberg end of level bosses and how difficult they could be. It reminds me some great advice I got from the lead designer of Uncharted. A game that only a few people can finish will be loved by only a few people. A game that everyone can finish will be loved by millions. I also thought this rings true and is a pillar of modern game development to have depth, challenge and immersion over brute difficulty. Breath of the Wild is a great example of this. Visually, the game borrows a lot from Demons of Asterberg. For a startup company, Neofid are not only talented, but smart. They're reusing their game engine here to accelerate their development cycle and maximize their investment in their engine. And this shows in the visuals of the game. If you've played Asterberg, you'll recognize a lot of the assets in Asterbros. This is not a bad thing and the pixel artwork is lovely and has helped the team to refine the gameplay experience. There are also new characters and environmental items and I'm sure we'll see more new backgrounds and enemies as development progresses. As with its predecessor in the Asterberg series, the game's art is AAA and would have been in good company with some of the best looking games at the height of Sega Genesis and Mega Drive's success. The sound design of this game retains its AAA approach with an intense sound track and some amazing sound effects that really reinforce what's happening on the screen. Currently there is only one dungeon track in the demo, but I'm hoping for more and perhaps even some situational dynamic changes to the soundtrack as you move through the dungeons or the player's status changes. Bros is shaping up to be another great AAA game for our Sega Mega Drive and Genesis and you can also pick this up remember on the Nintendo Switch and Steam. The Kickstarter is running now but there's only a week left if you're watching this at the time of filming and I definitely definitely recommend you get in there quickly to get some of the Kickstarter extras. Now remember, if you're new to the show and you've liked what you've seen, why not consider subscribing by pressing that little button underneath the video. We make brand new content every single Monday, and so that you don't miss out on it, make sure you click on the little bell as well. 
Now, if you can't wait until Monday, don't worry, because we've got a huge back catalogue of retro gaming videos for you to enjoy, two of which you can watch over here.